<laughs> More than watching somebody else be blessed. Glory to God. I don't know how God's going to bless you, but he's going to bless you too. Because the same God that's good to one is the same God that's good to all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If he's blessing somebody in this room, then blessings are in this room. Glory to God. He's in the neighborhood. Hallelujah. I told you Wednesday night that we are so blessed. Speaking of being blessed, I'm blessed to have a beautiful bride by my side. Will y'all help me celebrate? Lady Katrina Love. <laughs> Thank God for her so much. Thank God for all of our visitors. Listen, give me 20 minutes and then we'll be out of here. I just want to share this quick word with you. The word that God has given me to share with you this morning is prophetic. Um, there are times in, in my life when I'm studying a word and sometimes God will have me to, to point, get some notes. And so I'm, I'm, when, when I study, I study in points. My brain just worked like that. I study in points. But as I was studying this, God didn't give me any points. Um, so oftentimes when God does that, he wants me just to share what he gives, what he places on my heart as I'm speaking. So as I'm speaking, I'm sure God's going to say something to you when you hear something that you believe God spoke to you. Just jot that thing down because God's going to say something profound to you this morning. Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse number 22 through 25. New King James Version reads like this. 20 minutes on my clock, please. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into the boat, he meaning Jesus, got into the boat with his disciples. And he, Jesus, said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Jesus fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water. The boat was filling with water and they were in jeopardy or they were in danger. And they came to him. They came to Jesus and they woke him up saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased. And there was calm. But he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Father, thank you so much for this moment. God, with these next few minutes that we have, Lord God, use this, use this time for your glory. Prepare the ear of the hearer. Prepare our heart to receive what you are saying to this church. Arrest any spirit that's not like you. Anything that hinders, delays, or tries to deny the impartation that you're about to give in this room. Father, we ask and we invite you to have your way now. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Before you take your seats, I need you to hear this prophetically. I need you to speak this prophetically and profoundly to someone. Will you simply tell the person who needs to hear it, give them my title, and tell them the storm is over? Come on, tell somebody else. The storm, the storm, the storm is over. 
the storm is over. It is in this season that we are studying the life of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus. Next Sunday, we will consider to be Christmas Eve. It is the Sunday that we, we really focus and drill down into why God sent his son, Jesus the Christ. Christmas is not about reindeer. It's not about the sleigh. It's not about men coming through chimneys. Christmas is about Jesus. It is about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Today I want to focus on a miracle that Jesus performed, a one that I believe he's performing even now in some of your lives. Miracles are amazing. As you read the miracles of Jesus, there were some amazing miracles that he did during the course of his life. A miracle is when divinity manifests in humanity. A miracle is when God decides to disrupt some happenings that are here on this earth. It is when the supernatural God begins to intervene in the natural lives of mankind. There are three primary reasons why Jesus did miracles. He did miracles, one, to glorify God. He did miracles to point to God being the Father and the ruler of the universe. He did miracles to help people. He did miracles. He would see people in trouble. He would see a blind man and he would give him his sight. He would see people who were deaf and needed to hear and he would do it to help people. And lastly, Jesus did miracles to prove that he was the Messiah, to prove that he indeed was the Son of God. I thank God for this story in the Gospel of Luke. Luke was a physician. I like reading uh, Luke's account of Scripture because Luke seems to be a little bit more detailed than Matthew, Mark, or, or John. I like reading Luke's account. Luke said that it was a particular day that Jesus gets onto the boat with his disciples. He gets onto the boat with his disciples and he tells his disciples, let's go to the other side. Now, now this is the thing that I like the most and this thing that, that you need to be mindful of as, as the storm is passing in your life is that you need to make sure that wherever you go and whatever you do, you need to make sure that Jesus is on board. You need to make sure that he is on board with the decisions that you're making in your life, the decisions that you're making for your family. You need to make sure that Jesus is on board. Because truth be told, there are some things that happens in our lives, some things or some decisions that we make that Jesus is just not on board with. Praise God. I never forget I was in the army and uh, a group of my friends and we, we had gone out to eat and uh, after we had finished eating, we ate until we were fat full. We ate as much as we could. And uh, one of my friends at the table looked at me and said, hey, listen, it's time to dine and dash. I'd never heard of that before. I had no idea what he was talking about. I was pulling my wallet, getting ready to uh, see how much my ticket was. And he says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get up one at a time. And we're going to head for the door. And as we head for the door, here's what they told me. They said, you give us your keys. We were in my car. They said, you give us the keys. We're going to go crank the car. And as we head out, when you come out, jump in the driver's seat and we're going to take off. Now, I got to tell you, I heard that. I was raised not to steal. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't bring myself to do that. But what I'm trying to tell you was, I just wasn't on board. I wasn't on board with what they were talking about. So here's my question to you. The decisions that you're making, where you're going in your life, my question for you, is Jesus on board? If you're going to make it through the storms in your life, you need to make sure that Jesus is on board with you. Jesus tells them, let's go to the other side. Now, I like it because not only was Jesus on board, they were following Jesus' commands and not trying to get Jesus to follow their commands. If you're going to make it through the storm, you need to know what God has said. 
You've got to have a word from God as you are matriculating through the storms and the vicissitudes of life. You need to make sure that you've heard a word from God. I like what the Bible says. The Bible says that after they heard the word from God, they launched out. They heard the word, then they launched out. They heard, they didn't know why they were going to the other side. They just heard the word of God and decided to step out on faith. Many people will have the word of God, but then they will, they will delay in stepping out on what God said. Tell your neighbor, it's time to launch out. It's time, it's time. I know that you enjoy sitting by the bank. I know that you've got comfortable, but it is time to launch out. It's time to start the business. It's time to write the book. It's time to build the dream. Whatever thing that God placed in your heart, it's time to launch out. I thank God that they did not delay in launching out. They heard the word and they launched out. As they launched out, they are, they, are, they are in the sea. They're in the Sea of Galilee. They're going about their merry way. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of the sea, Jesus goes to sleep. There will be times in your life, children of God, when it seems like the time that you need to hear from God, it'll seem like he sleeps. Times when you need God to give you a word. You need God to show up and, and do something amazing in your life. There will be times in your life when it seems like Jesus is sleeping. Jesus goes to sleep. Things are calm initially. Then all of a sudden, a storm came down. Glory to God. A storm came down. Severe weather came down. Down. A storm is a significant disruption in normal conditions. It's when things around you become contrary to your destination that's called a storm. Storms generally lead to negative impacts in our lives. The storm came down. You got to look at the way the text is written. The way the text says, it says a storm came down upon them. If you read the context, you can understand the content. The context suggests that there was not a storm anywhere else on the sea. That the storm came down right upon them. Have you ever had a storm just to come down upon you all of a sudden? It seemed like everybody else around you was smiling and everybody else was doing well and there was just a storm that just came down upon you all of a sudden. Hezekiah had a storm to come down upon him. All of a sudden, the prophet comes to him and tells him, Hezekiah, you need to set your house in order because you are surely about to die. It was a storm that came down upon him. David had a storm come down upon him. The man that used to be David's mentor, the man he looked up to, the man that was like a father figure to him, King Saul, is now trying to take his head off. It was a storm that just came down upon him. David's now running for his life because a storm, storms have a tendency to just sometimes come down upon your life. Job is the epitome of someone who just had a storm to just come down upon him. Job is minding his business. He and his wife sitting at the dinner table. They're enjoying their food. And all of a sudden, servant after servant after servant rushes in and says, Job, you, all your kids are dead. Job, all your stock has gone. Job, all your money is gone. Job, and then on top of that, Job then gets sick and breaks out with boil. A storm just came down. Upon his life. Storm just came down. I got to be honest with you. I wish I could tell you that every day was going to be great in life. I wish I could tell you that every day man was going. I wish I could tell you that every day uh, that you were going to receive a significant blessing. But you got to know in every life, a little rain is going to fall in every life. But we don't have to be, we don't have to be afraid of the storms. Watch this. Because storms have purpose. Oh my God. Storms have purpose. Now, wait a minute. Stay with me. Stay with me. I got about 10 more minutes. Stay with me. Storms have purpose. Well, you say, Pastor Love, if storms have purpose, then what was the reason that the storm manifest right there with the disciples with Jesus on board and Jesus is sleeping? 
Glory to God. Jesus sleeping and a storm manifests. As the storm manifests, they're trying everything that they can. They are trying to shovel water. The, the wind is boisterous and it's pushing the boat. The boat is beginning to break. And the disciples recognize, they realize that they were about to die. They realize that we're not going to make it out of this. When you look at the text, it's, when you read the text, it seemed like the disciples went to wake Jesus up. So he could do something. But that's not, that's not the content of the context. If you read the story well, what it suggests was that they've made up in their mind that we all about to die. In other words, they didn't want Jesus to die in his sleep. They go down. They say, Jesus, if you read Mark's account, Mark goes down and Mark says, do you care? <laughs> In other words, there's a storm and you're sleeping. How can you sleep? In a time. <laughs> In a time like this. How can you sleep? And all the thundering and lightning and all the things that are happening, the boat is being tossed to and fro. How can you sleep in a time like this? They went and they woke Jesus up. Glory to God. When they woke Jesus up, Jesus comes to the top and Jesus then speaks to the wind, speaks to the waves. And the wind and the waves obey him. But wait a minute. We still haven't answered the question. Why the storm manifest? We still have not dealt with the reason storm that storm manifests. Because I told you that storms have a purpose. We still haven't dealt with it. Can I tell you? When Jesus said to the disciples, let's go to the other side. It was because, stand up James, stand up James, stand up. Come, come stand right there in the corner. He told him, let's go to the other side. Stop right there. Stop right there. Jesus knew that on the other side, in the country of the Gadarenes, that there was a man that was possessed. I'm not saying you possessed. But he knew there was a man that was possessed by a legion of demons. He had so many demons that they call, they call themselves legion because we are many. Glory to God. So when Jesus was on this side saying, let's go to the other side, it was because Jesus was going to save him. <sighs> Most theologians suggest that Satan overheard the plan that Jesus was about to go and cast out all of the hundreds of demons that Satan had strategically placed in that one man. So along the way, Satan sends a storm. <laughs> Satan sends a storm because he was hoping that the storm would cause them not to make their destination. Can I tell somebody in this crowded room that Satan has sent some storms in your life. Because Satan knows that you're on your way to set somebody else free. Satan will send storms in your life to try to delay you, to try to stop you, to try to hinder you. If you can learn how to look past the storm and you got to see your destination. Tell your neighbor God is doing something in my life and I can't let the storm stop me. Oh, that's better than you understand. I cannot let the storm, can't let the storm stop. I told you storms have a purpose. Storm came, it's tearing the boat up. They go down and they say, Jesus, do you care? We are about to die. 
We don't want you to die in your sleep. Wake up. And we want you to see death the way we're looking at it. Because they didn't know who he was yet. The text suggests that although they were around him, they still didn't know who he was. The text suggests that although he had given them command, they had seen them do a few miracles. The text suggests that they still didn't know who he was. Can you imagine a storm raging in your life? Whatever your storm is, a financial storm, I don't know, financial storm, maybe a domestic storm. There's some things going on in your home. Maybe it's just some, just some emotional storm, some things happening in your life. Can you imagine saying, Lord, I need you. I need you to come deal with this storm. Jesus gets up. He steps to the bow of the ship. Jesus then says, peace. <laughs> Jesus says, peace. Be still. Jesus says, peace. Be still. It was at that moment that the wind stopped blowing. That the waves calmed down. He said, peace. Be still. I need to speak that into your life this morning. Peace. Peace. You ought to walk in your house and say, peace. Peace I leave with you. Not the peace the world gives, but the peace that I give. No one can take it away. He says, he says, peace. He says, peace. When he said peace, stay there, James. When he said peace, they went from thinking that they were about to die to now realizing we're going to live. I need to tell somebody in this room, you thought the storm was designed to take you out. But the storm was designed so that you could see the glory of God manifesting in your life. Jesus said, peace. That's why we worship him, because he's the author of peace. Jesus stands up and says, peace be Everything settles down. The Bible says that the disciples became afraid. <laughs> it was a reverential fear. They said, who is this man that even the wind. The wind. Nobody knows where the wind comes from. Nobody knows where it's coming from and where it's going. Nobody knows what's causing the wind to blow the way it does. And this man just stands up and he speaks to it. He commands the wind. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Jesus commands the storms that's in your life. Satan is the God of the air. And sometimes God will allow Satan to send storms, but you need to know that even a storm that Satan sends has to bow down to the voice of God. Jesus then stands and Jesus said to them, Where? Where's your faith? 
you should have known that you can't die yet. Because I told you we're going to the other side. Where's your faith? Here's my question for you. Here's my question. Where's your faith? When you're going through storms, do you say, God, I know you're able. Or do you get into a storm and start complaining? And Jesus saying to you, where is your faith? Now, I like this last part, and I'm done. He says to them, where's your faith? The boat has been broken. It's splintered. They've lost some cargo. They were to throw some things overboard, but guess what? They kept on sailing. Whew. Look at me, purpose. Sometimes your life will be splintered. Sometimes it seems like your life has been broken to pieces. But if you can just keep Jesus on board, if you can just keep your eyes on him, if you just keep him on board, he'll keep you afloat. Will you tell somebody, if you keep Jesus on board, he'll keep you afloat? Tell him he will, if you keep him on board, he will keep you afloat. Oh, do y'all hear what I just said? The boat's torn up. The boat's battered. It is beat up, but Jesus keeps it afloat. <laughs> they get to the other side. Come a little closer. They get to the other side. Watch this. They made it to their destination now. There was a man chained up. He was stronger than 10 men. And he's probably about stronger than 10 men. Stronger than 10 men. Jesus gets over there. When he's walking off the boat, the, the, the demons address Jesus and say, man, what you doing here? You come to cast us out? You all right? You ain't, okay, I'll make sure you all right now. I'm gonna cast some stuff out of you right quick. <laughs> make sure you pretending. <laughs> Okay. This man had been bound by multitudes of demons. Jesus not only showed the disciples that he had power over wind, waves, and water, but he's now showing his disciples, I've got power over demons. And he goes and he commands the legion of demons to come out of him and to be cast into the swine. For the first time in this man's life, he is now free. He is now free. He can worship now. Yeah, he can worship now. For the first time, he's free. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. The next time a storm manifests in your life, I want you to look past it. And say, devil, what are you trying to stop me from? Who's on the other side of this storm that I'm supposed to be ministering to? Who am I supposed to be blessing on the other side of what I'm going through? Glory to God. You got to look up from where you are. Have faith in the middle of your storm. Here is my last point. God bless you, James. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Look at me. Look at me. I'm almost done. Look at me. Once the storm was over, they were able to get to their destination. I said to you, for those of you who will receive that, the storm is over. Listen to me. No, 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 don't clap yet, don't clap yet, don't clap yet. Listen to me. It's not a time to relax. It's not a time to take a deep breath, lay on the couch. It's time to say, okay, God, you brought me through that. Now, God, who am I supposed to help? God, you brought me through it.
Now I'm looking for the person I'm supposed to help. The people I'm supposed to pour into their lives, God, I'm looking for them. You made a way for me. So God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell somebody else that you're a way maker. God, you open the door for me there. I'm going to tell somebody else that you are the God that opens doors. It's not time for me to be still now. Now it's time for me to be about my father's business. Jesus, eight years old in the temple talking to scribes and Pharisees. And the Bible says that they were amazed at his understanding. The Bible says that when his mom and dad showed up and said, man, what are you doing? We've been looking for you. Jesus said to his own mama and daddy, what's up, y'all? Don't you know I got to be about my father's business? What am I saying to you? Storm is over. Jesus says to, he says to Peter, listen to me. He says, Peter, Satan has asked for you because he desires to sift you like wheat. You would have think that Jesus would have came back and said, listen, don't worry. I told him he can't have you. That's not what Jesus said. <laughs> Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat. <laughs> I would have loved to hear Jesus say, don't worry about it. I'm putting a shield of protection around you. And I'm going to make sure that Satan can't touch you. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm going to let him get you. Let's read the Bible. It's a really cool book. He said, I'm going to let him get you. Watch this. But then he gives him a prophetic word. He says, after you have returned. In other words, you're going to go through some stuff. But after you go through, you're going to come back. In other words, you're going to go through, but you're going to make it through. You're going to have some storms, but you're going to make it through the storm. Don't worry about the storm. You're going to make it through the storm after you have returned. He tells Peter. When you get back, it's time to strengthen your brothers. It's time to strengthen somebody else. Some of you have gone through some storms. Now it's time for you to help strengthen somebody else. Storm. Storm is over. Will you stand all over this building?